This is going to be a demonstration of layers on Filterstone 4.5 on iPhone. I'm going to begin by loading up an image. Um, and before we get started, I'm just going to make a few minor changes to this image. Uh, first, I'm going to pull down the saturation. I'm going to apply that to the whole image. And then I am going to come to my blur tool here the blurring and I'm going to apply a mask here and I'm going to use the vignette tool to blur the edges uh, something like that looks good you can see the I just got blurred just apply that so now uh, if I go to my layers tool now You'll see uh, the hue saturation here applied to the base, applied to the base layer. Uh, the reason for that is uh, the image at the time was completely opaque, and there was no need to create a new, uh, new layer. Now, when I uh, use the mask tool, it will automatically make a new layer um, and set uh, what I did as the mask for that layer. Um, if you have layers, oh. Uh, Remember to turn layers on before you do any of this. Uh, if you keep them off, it'll automatically flatten after each step. Um, so here you see we have two layers. Uh, you, and you see a little preview for the image and for the mask. So maybe you can see this one's sharp and that one's blurry. Uh, it may not show up in the video, but it's fairly easy to tell for me. Um, so now when you look at this image, you see you know, the center is all is still sharp. But and desaturated as we did, but the edges, it's probably uh, clearest on this edge, are uh, get blurred with that uh, vignette effect. So while the uh, image of this layer is entirely blurred, because this mask um, only has, uh, you can see it's black on the outside and white on the inside. Black is where it's opaque and white is where it's transparent. So it's this uh, layer only shows up along the edges. Uh, now we can. Make it even more clear by editing this layer. Uh, you can tap on the image of it to bring up the filters list. Um, and this will edit specifically that one layer. So if I come to curves here and I pull it up, you can see its layer is now both uh, blurred and being brightened. Well, it gives a bit of a, <clears throat> excuse me, it gives a bit of a halo round. So I'm just going to hit the check button and apply that. So the mask stays the same, but now it's both blurred and brightened along the outsides. So you can tap on the uh, image to edit the image, and you can tap on, just in the same way you can tap on the mask to go back into masking for that. So if I wanted to, I could use a brush to you know, add more to that, but I really didn't want to. I'm just going to erase that. and. Done. Um, by the way, if you're editing the mask, the X button works like the canceling in uh, when you're first adding the mask. So if you already have a mask and you hit the X, it will delete the mask. So always use the check button to, to preserve the mask unless you don't like it anymore. We can also duplicate layers the duplicate button here, uh, merge them down, delete them, change the opacity. So I pull that down, you'll see it gets dimmer and change the blend mode. I don't want to do any of that right now. And you can add a new layer here. Now when you use this plus button to add a new layer, um, the new layer you see this mask is all black. That means it's completely opaque, but the image hasn't changed at all because what it's doing is it's just flattening all the uh, current layers, making a new layer with those contents. So now we just see that, which we don't really need to do, so I'll just delete that right now. And now you can see we're back to these two. Uh, and what I want to do now is um, I'm going to use this other Add button. What that does is it brings up the uh, picker, image picker, and I took a picture. Actually, hold on. First I want to do something else. First I'm going to uh, at a border. 
got ahead of myself there a bit. Uh, I'm just going to, no words, just white border, no shadow, plain and simple, add border. And the way the border tool works is it, uh, it also actually creates uh, its own layer. One's just simply black and white with a mask to uh, along the outside. And you can actually see the, uh, oops, the layers below, you can see there, have also been expanded so that the border doesn't cover any of the image. But now that I have that white border that I wanted, I'm going to come here and I'm going to, I took a photo of some crumpled up paper just for, uh, for texture. And now, so I hit that and choose the image and now you can see there's this transparent overlay. So I can position it by, uh, you know, however it's positioned, if I hit the mask button, is how it will be applied on. But I want to rotate it so that it's uh, of a similar ratio and I'm just going to hit this fit to image button to scale it to match. Uh, so now I have my masking tools um, and I can do the normal thing where I brush it on um, and that's very useful or the gradient tool especially is very useful if I want to uh, combine images not using something like this texture but in this case I want it completely opaque for now so I'm just going to make it completely solid. I use the invert mask button to change it from completely transparent to completely opaque. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to its settings and I could, you know, reduce the opacity and, you know, get it something like that, but that's not really what I want to do. It's not terrible, but it's not what I want to do. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the overlay blend mode. Multiply might be a good choice too, actually, because it's black and white. Actually, I'm going to use multiply. Yeah. Now I can play with the opacity and see what I like, but now it looks like it's on a crumpled, crumpled paper. Uh, now maybe I just want to take my curves tool and just increase the contrast to give it more grit. Apply that. And that's using layers to uh, edit an image.